what's good josh boy ross back at again with another video so we're going to check out 10 outdated rules you didn't know have been banned in wwe man this should be a uh, uh another interesting video maybe there's some rules i didn't know about i'm pretty sure there are going to be some rules i didn't know that i know about that were banned in wwe they're constantly changing up things depending on you know what you know partnerships they have they have to do that since they're a publicly traded company they kind of have to abide by certain rules and maybe they ban certain things in in uh in the uh idea of maybe protecting wrestlers or maybe they ban certain things because of you know obviously you know partners may not be okay with what what's being shown on tv i know for a lot of them they don't really want to see blood they try to cut away from that even if it's legit hard way blood they cut they try to cut away from that try to get that cleaned up that's just the policy of how things are you know we've been known that so we're gonna check this out appreciate all love and support man let's get right into this one there are certain rules and tropes in wwe that have become incredibly outdated mm -hmm. in relation to rules there are rules that exist in a wrestling match that have been around for decades yet they make no logical sense and are rarely enforced in relation to tropes these are things written in wwe lore that while still officially a thing from a kayfabe perspective are subjectively used based on the specific storyline and this just leads to severe continuity errors so with that being said let's look at 10 outdated rules and tropes in wwe oh so these are outdated rules be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleLamia.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. Number 10, The Closed Fist. Mm, I've known In about that one. every WWE match, an established rule exists which states that wrestlers aren't permitted to use a closed fist to punch their opponent. Mm -hmm. However, over the years, this rule has been heavily relaxed, so much so that certain wrestlers use punches as signature and even finishing moves. Yeah. The logic behind closed <clears throat> fists being banned is that if open fists were legal during a match, then there would be a knockout just minutes into the match, and WWE would quickly turn into UFC 2.0. Mm. Mm -hmm. WWE have struggled to rationalize this rule in the past. In yep. fact, when Roman Reigns performs his Superman punch, yeah. WWE's commentary team simply ignores the fact that it's an illegal maneuver. Technically. Number nine, the referee is weak. Oh my God, bro. It's like the referee is made out of damn paper mache. I'm talking about ain't no strong bone in they body. You can literally look at them and they'll just start flopping out the ring. You look at them too hard, they done. Since WWE referees began to be incorporated into spots and matches, there is a common trope which relates to how they react and sell to any form of damage. Wait. When a referee takes a bump in a match, oh. they are out of action for several minutes, even when they just get knocked over. Naturally, the reason for this from a storytelling perspective is so a wrestler can cheat or interference can go down, but it makes the referee in question look insanely weak. Mm -hmm. How does a simple knockdown render them unconscious? This is a common trait that is unlikely to ever go away. Whilst it certainly creates compelling drama, it's become rather stale as a predictable spot, mm -hmm. and perhaps it's time for major companies such as WWE to rework the spot with a modern day spin. Facts. Eight automatic rematch clauses mm. one of the unwritten rules in wwe is that once a champion loses their title they have an automatic rematch mm -hmm. however wwe have been extremely selective in relation to how this has been applied for instance if the story wwe is telling at the time doesn't warrant a championship rematch wwe will simply ignore the rule as if it doesn't exist Facts. this was seen when kofi kingston lost the wwe title to brock lesnar in 2019 Instead of receiving his rematch, <sighs> WWE opted to pretend that the rule doesn't exist mm -hmm. and Kingston nor WWE would never mention it on TV. <laughs> Which is so, you hold the championship for about six years, your first WWE championship, and you lose in like less than 20 seconds or some crazy stuff, only for you to be like, all right, well, it's time to link up with the new gay new day i say new gay <laughs> new day uh brothers and uh not worry about it no more make it make sense y'all this can become frustrating as a viewer as the lack of consistency in relation to how it is applied can show a lack of care and attention on behalf of wwe Number seven, five second grace period. 
A huge WWE rule that many fans aren't aware of is the five-second grace period. Mm -hmm. This rule exists predominantly in tag team matches and states that when someone is tagged into a match, their partner has five seconds to exit the ring. You can often see referees counting to five when both wrestlers are in the ring, mm -hmm. but it's not exactly a rarity for referees to completely forget and let it slide. In a modern-day WWE match, a ton of offense is conducted by two wrestlers in the ring, and this, in theory, should be a disqualification. To say the rule is outdated and nonsensical is an understatement, and WWE should look to remove it from their internal rule book. Probably won't. Number six, chokes are illegal. This is uh, supposed to be true. illegal in a WWE match, but this doesn't stop wrestlers using a chokehold as a submission move. Take, for instance, Samoa Joe. He would use his coquina clutch throughout his time in WWE, but it was never addressed as to just why Joe was allowed to perform the move. Mm -hmm. WWE has a weird policy on chokes, mm -hmm. and it likely predominantly relates to their PG guidelines. Mm -hmm. Additionally, WWE's policy in relation to chokes goes one step further. According to WWE legend The Big Show, when WWE wrestlers pose with fans, they aren't permitted to pose in any way which replicates a choke. Oh. The Big Show has revealed that he He's received several letters from WWE's legal department insisting he doesn't mimic a chokehold in any way, shape, or form. Damn. Number 5. WWE's Formal Dress Code In 2004, Vince McMahon implemented a dress code for WWE wrestlers and personnel. This meant that wrestlers upon arriving to WWE TV had to wear smart business clothing. WWE executive Bruce Prichard would discuss the implementation of the dress code on his Something to Wrestle podcast, and he has stated that Randy Orton absolutely hated the new rule. <laughs> he stated, God, you know, Randy Orton, as a matter of fact, Randy was like, why can't I just wear nice jeans? And jeans were on the X list. Randy didn't like it. And, you know, it was, I think that most of the guys looked at it like, kind of rolled their eyes and said, okay, we'll do it. But there was nobody that was, yay, we've got a dress code because the guys that dressed were already doing it. I think that it came down to seeing the guys that were dressed that looked really good like Batista and all those guys. It was like, God damn, they look sharp. And somebody walks in behind them with shorts and flip-flops or a Tommy Bahama shirt and Nike shoes, and you <laughs> go, God damn. It was a combination of a lot of things that got us to that point. This rule is still ridiculed and criticized to this very day, and with Vince McMahon being officially out of the picture, it's no doubt time to remove the dress code policy from the company. Man, I've seen a few people, they don't, Roman Reigns in, in the blood, they don't, even when Vince was there, they weren't coming up in there in their suits. They were coming in there on some chill gear. I don't know if it's like that now, but it seems like it's probably been more relaxed since then. I don't know. I Number four, wrong. rope breaks in no DQ or gimmick matches. Yeah, that never made sense. One of the most nonsensical sense. things about certain gimmick matches is that rope breaks apply. Yeah. Take, for instance, the Elimination Chamber match, which has been a WWE staple since 2002. Shouldn't be no Even rope break. Even though the match is a no DQ, rope breaks still apply and are still enforced by referees. Why is this? A great example of this in action Doesn't is the acclaimed sense. WWE title chamber match from 2019. The final two of the match were Daniel Bryan and Kofi Kingston. When Bryan applied the yes lock, Kingston reached the ropes and Bryan simply let go. Bryan wouldn't be disqualified if he continued using the hold and Kingston yeah. passed out, so yeah. what's the logic in letting go? Yeah. This is one of those rules that is just a given in certain matches, but when you actually think about the rationale behind the established rule, that's when the flaws come to light. Number three, 30-day yeah, title defense rule. A commonly used rule in this WWE is definitely not is the that case sometimes. <laughs> have 30 days to defend the title or they will be stripped of the respective championship. This has been seen a number of times throughout WWE history. One time was 2017 when Naomi went down with an injury. WWE's explanation of Naomi being stripped of the SmackDown Women's title was that she would be unable to abide by the 30-day ruling. When this happened, fans were quick to criticize WWE for only applying the rule when it suited the storyline. Brock Lesnar, who has been a part-time world champion on and off for the past several years, has never once abided by the 30-day rule. In fact, I need I say more. Need I say more? You just look at Brock. But they're very selective with that shit, bro. <laughs> In fact, he's gone months at a time without defending the title. Yeah. This has also been seen recently with mm -hmm. undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns. Since taking on a part-time schedule, Reigns has missed a number of pay-per-view events, which means he has also broken the 30-day rule. Facts. 
Number two, the five count. One of the rules every single WWE fan knows is the five count. Mm -hmm. This relates to when a wrestler reaches the ropes, then they have till the count of five to break the hold in question. In theory, if a wrestler fails to break their hold at five, it should result in an automatic disqualification, but this rarely, if ever, happens in WWE. Mm -hmm. This rule is outdated simply because it's never enforced, making it completely pointless. The rule still being present on WWE TV makes the referees look incompetent and inferior, <laughs> as when the wrestler has failed to break their hold at five, the referee stands there awkwardly as yeah. if they have no power or authority. Yeah. Number one, Royal Rumble Elimination Rules. The Royal Rumble match is one of the most popular match types in WWE history. Debuting in 1988, the match type has become synonymous with WWE and specifically the start of WrestleMania season. Unfortunately, there is a rule that exists in the Rumble match which is flawed and needs to be removed. This relates to how Rumble competitors can be eliminated by someone not legally in the match. Mm -hmm. This has been seen a number of times throughout the past few decades. Yep. A wrestler not legally in the match will enter the Rumble match, proceed to eliminate their arch rival, and yep. this elimination will then, for some reason, stand. This has also been seen when a previously eliminated wrestler comes mm -hmm. back into the match to get revenge on the person who eliminated them. It's unlikely that this rule is ever going to change as WWE view it as a storytelling device of course. rather than anything that respects the integrity of the Rumble match Yeah, itself. they're not going to do that. Well, guys, there you have it. Ten that, yeah, that's going to always be a thing. It's a, it's a storytelling situation. It is. It's, a, it's, a, it's to enhance the story that's going on particularly uh, at, the, at the Royal Rumble. So a lot of these rules, when you really break them down, they don't really enforce, doesn't make sense, probably should get rid of them. I'm one of the people that I'm I'm like the rule with it, no blood at all. I think certain colors should be like blood should be in certain matches. Elimination Chamber, definitely one of them. You know, Hell in a Cell should be, you know, I'm not saying every time, but if there should be some blood there to give a little bit of color to sell the destructive nature. I know why they don't do it, you know, but that's a, a rule I wish they, you know, they were able to lift every now and then to really give that 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 holy what the hell just happened and they they rarely do it but you know i, I wish it was just a little bit more uh a little bit you know more prominent you know in certain feuds certain matches certain situations so comment down below let me know did you guys know about all these rules and do you feel like a lot of them they should just get rid of because it just doesn't make sense let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 150k and i am still your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world and also i am you're in the clutch world everywhere champion appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace